What's going on, people? Ronnie Speed coming back, of course. So I'm going to do something a little different, man. I'm not going to do like a weekly recap, but I'm uh, I'm going to do a video, you know, trying to inspire you and give y'all some tips and uh, reasons why some drivers cannot make $2,000 a week. So I got a list about, uh, let me see, about seven different ideas that I think was preventing drivers, uh, was holding them back from making $2,000 a week. These are not in any particular order, but um, let's get straight to it, shall we? Number one, I'll say number one is the desire. I think most people don't have the desire to even try to burn the midnight oil and put the work in. Um, like when I first started driving, you know, like five years ago, I didn't even know like I was gonna make $2,000 a week. Like I was just driving, you know, part-time, just enjoying it, not really taking it serious. Wasn't as structured and um, as disciplined as I am now. But, um, you know, I had like a changing point. You know, I was curious after meeting a whole bunch of drivers or people who used to drive and they always had an opinion or a theory about something about how much money they can make. And I'm like, how are you not making money? They used to tell me, oh, I used to drive, but you know, I didn't make any money, so it wasn't worth it. Like loser language. And I'm like, how are you not making money? Like I'm out here like crushing it. You know, I wasn't even making 2,000 a week. I was probably making like 12, 14, 1,500 or so. And I'm, you know, just having a good time. And I'm like, how are you not making money? So, I mean, I just took it upon myself to drive the maximum hours because people used to piss me off. Like that shit used to generally piss me off. And, um, you know, I wanted to find out for myself. So I had a desire to, okay, I'm gonna take it upon myself. I'm gonna drive 12 hours a day until they kick me off for at least 30 days, just to see what would happen. You know, cause I felt like that's the only way that you can objectively know how much money you can make as a Uber or Lyft driver. You know, you have to drive the maximum hours possible, right? Cause if you put, if you put the maximum hours in, it's like you literally tried your best. There was nothing else that you could do um, that day. So once I start doing that, start making crazy numbers, I'm like, okay, this is serious. So, you know, unfortunately, most people would never have that desire to, you know, put the work in, go above and beyond. Most people just want to, you know, want the, the easy fix. There is no easy fix. If you got to put the two, if you want to make the $2,000, it's up to you to figure out how to do it. I mean, maybe you can't make it, but what you can do is you can at least try. The best way to try is, you know, I, you don't have to drive 30 days because I know most of you not going to do that anyway. So I would say drive seven days for 12 hours a day, try to hit 84 hours, just to see what you what you uh, will earn. Bet you never thought about that, huh? So that's desire. Okay, that brings me to number two, um, discipline. I know y'all tired of hearing me stress over and over and over again about discipline, but this is very important. Like you have to develop the uh, daily disciplines in order for you to reach $2,000. I mean, like how can you expect to make $2,000 coming from a nine to five where you probably wasn't, let's say making a thousand or even like 1300 a week. Now you gonna try to double what you're making. So you have to put the double the work in and you're gonna have to do it consistently. So you have to be disciplined and structured in order so you could hit that type of goal. So like I said, like in previous videos, I don't always feel like driving, but most of the time I'm pretty disciplined and I get it done some way, shape or form. And even the times I take off, it's like I know I could get back out there and make a quick $2,000 like the next, the following week. Just because I put the time in, like I have put the time in, I understand like the area I'm in, how to make money, like what can I do to get far, like, you know, further trips or increase my chances to get longer trips? So, discipline, man. Now why, now, now, why is it important to be disciplined? Because this is like the beginning foundation of, you know, discovering, like, yo, I guess like you could say like discover, discovering like your other self in a sense, because like once you start driving, you know, 50, 60 plus hours a week, 
you're gonna become a whole new person. Like you're gonna feel like, damn, I feel good. Like I'm out here getting the work in. You know, you're gonna feel better about yourself and your confidence is gonna start boosting over and over. I mean, your confidence is gonna start building. So eventually you're gonna be like, I could do this. I can do this consistently. Then like some of those habits that, some of those bad habits that you had in the past, you're gonna slowly but surely start to break those habits and learn better habits and be more structured and be more disciplined and be more focused. Cause like you need these habits. Like you need to switch uh, from what you're doing and switch, I mean, develop new habits so you can make this 2000 a week. Before I get to number three, I, <laughs> I'm looking at the list and all of these starts with the letter D. I kind of structured like that on purpose. So yeah, anyways, number three, distractions. As a driver, it is so easy, so easy to be distracted. Because now like you in charge of your own time. For most people, like especially if you're doing it full time, you in charge of your own time, you make your own schedule, so you have autonomy. But are you ready for autonomy though? Are you ready to plan your own, like plan your day out, um, you know, schedule everything and still and still put the work in? So once you're driving, like I said, it's easy to get distractions because stuff will come up, you know, you got a flexible schedule. So friends will, hey, I'm, hey, well, I'm about to go to this bar or we about to do this, come through. The next you know, you stop driving and you're doing other stuff. Like, so the time that you could be spending driving, you out having fun or, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be, whatever comes up. And trust me, a lot of stuff will come up. And especially like if you're driving in um, like a major like metropolitan area, at least somewhere like with a downtown, it's like, it's gonna be a lot of stuff to do and a lot of stuff that you're gonna learn and discover. So it's like, you're gonna wanna take part. I mean, FOMO will kick in for a lot of y'all. Like, like, dang, I feel like I'm missing out on stuff. You know, I wanna get out and enjoy myself. I've been working hard, so I get it. But you can't get too distracted. Because if you start doing, you know, going places and having, doing stress relief activities over and over again, eventually like that's gonna mess up your whole week and it's gonna mess up your momentum. And the, all those days that you take off from doing fun things or, you know, just chilling, that can fuck up your whole psychology in uh, order for you to keep making money over and over again. So, yep, distractions. So what type of like, that's, what type of distractions am I talking about? partying, um, like local current events, like I said, stress relieving activities, anything that involves fun can knock you off your path and screw that whole momentum up. So you wanna be conscientious of like what you're doing with your time and how much time you dedicated to doing fun things. And um, you gotta be wary of, oh yeah, also traveling. And you also have to be wary of how much uh, time you spending not driving. That, there's that. Number four, determination. I think it's very important for people to be, you have to have some type of determination because like, you know, I get DMs like every day now from people, you know, uh, they excited about driving, you know, they talk about, oh, I'm about to quit my job. You know, I'm about to, you know, drive full time. You inspired me 50, I'm gonna drive 50, 60 hours a week. But okay, fine. Like once the emotional high go down, and you've been driving for three months, four months, whatever the case may be, like how long is that flame gonna burn? Like, are you really gonna be determined to keep working and keep striving to hit your goals? Or are you gonna be one of those people like, oh, it's too hard. You know, maybe this isn't for me. You know, maybe I'll just go back to working a nine to five or get a job so I can have more security or something that's more stable, you know? And people like to take the easy route out and I get it because it is hard. Because if you if you have never done ride share, specifically Uber and Lyft, the theory, you, you can only talk based on theory. So the theory of it is, okay, I could drive, I can make money. Yeah, I could drive about, you know, seven hours a day, you know, then at the end of the week, let's say if I take one day off, you know, that'll be fucking 42 hours. So yeah, plus my normal job. Yeah, I could do that. But can you really do it? Most of you probably couldn't. So 
if you do make that conscientious decision to um to drive full time, you got you got to be determined. Like I always say, like you got to come up with a plan and just go after it and, and never quit and never give up. Cuz if you in a hot market, you could definitely make the money. I mean, it's going to be hard. You probably going to have setbacks, you know, car problems, you know, and all this stuff, but pff, are you determined to never give up and do whatever it takes for you to hit your goal? or you just gonna roll over. The choice is yours. The next one. I'll say the next one is days off. Too many days off to be specifically. Cause if you take that many days off, it's like you would get in a habit. Cause most people, like once you take a day off, you probably ain't, you're not gonna do nothing. You probably just want some time to yourself, chill, maybe, you know, catch up on some rest. But if you take a lot of time off, especially you compile days and days and days, that would make it much harder for you to get back out there. Because now, like, your disciplines are slipping, regardless if you realize it or not. So you, you, you want to be careful how many days you take off, because you want that fuel, I mean, that flame to keep burning. Like, you want to feel good, like, okay, I can get out there and kill it. And um, yeah, so how many days would I recommend taking off? I mean, everybody's different because everybody got, you know, different work ethic, but I do think it's important uh, for drivers to take a few days off, you know, maybe like four days off at the most, you know, just so if you're not traveling, just so you could, you know, get like rejuvenated. Cause sometimes it could be draining sitting in the car cause your back hurting, your ass locking up, like you sore. Then from talking to a whole bunch of people, just hearing their life story and they just yapping, yapping. It's like, man, that shit could be emotionally draining. And it's like, man, I just want some time to myself. I don't want to do nothing. I just want to chill. But be careful with that. Don't let it, don't stay there. You know, take a few days off, recharge, you know, and uh, get back out there and get back to grinding. Another one I would like to say, which is number six. Um, I'm not sure if a lot of people have uh, talked about this, but diet. Your diet is pretty important if you're driving. Because, um, you know, a lot of drivers, and especially like if you like in the Midwest or something, you know, a lot of people don't really have access to like healthy foods or just don't really care to eat healthy foods. You know, so your dieting can be pretty, not pretty, it is very important to driving because it can, it can also fuck with your mind. Because if you eating fatty foods, they'll make you feel like shit. So then if you feel like shit, then your mind gonna be like shit. Then you're, gonna, then you're not gonna work as hard. So for instance, so let's say, you know, I'm driving six, seven hours, I'm hungry, I wanna take a break, now I wanna eat a big old cheeseburger, french fries, you know, for y'all who drink pop, maybe y'all drink some pop or something. And like, that's a lot of calories and it's like, like a lot of fat. So sometime after you eat all that greasy food, you'll feel sluggish and lethargic. Then once you get back out there, now you tired. Now you dozing off and now you need to pull over, take a nap, or now your stomach hurt. So um, I, I would say eat as healthy as possible because regardless if y'all realize it or not, that could have a big effect in your psychology. You know, it really can. Because if you eating good, you're going you gonna to feel better. Because you're not putting a whole bunch of junk in your body. You know, you just got to think like a race car, man. You need racing fuel. You can't be putting no fucking bullshit Arco gas, you know, in a Ferrari engine. I mean, you probably could, but it won't be optimal. So if you want to be at optimum shape, you know, you want to eat healthy so it all flows together. Hmm. And the last one, drugs, specifically marijuana. I know a lot of people are living in states where marijuana is legal, but you want to be careful if you, if you choose to smoke on your break or something, I wouldn't recommend it. Shit, not to smoke too much if y'all do. I wouldn't even do it. But I know people, y'all gonna do what y'all wanna do. So if y'all smoke weed, y'all want y'all gotta be aware of the risk. So what's the risk of smoking weed? You're gonna be impaired, 
so you're probably gonna be driving slower, or worst case, you're gonna be sleepy. So once you're sleepy, how are you gonna drive? Cause you're gonna take a weed nap, but some of those naps gonna last for a few hours. So now you, you risking two to three hours out of your day cause you high and you sleepy. So that's money that you could be making. And a lot of times that could fuck your whole week up, especially if you have two or three days out of the week like that. So I wouldn't even, like if you driving, I wouldn't even mess with it. I'll just wait till you done driving, like wait till you get everything done out your day, then maybe before you go to bed, you know, roll up one or something, hit your, hit your piece. But yeah, I've seen it. I've seen like Uber and Lyft drivers out here, outside of their car getting high. And I'm like, damn, how you gonna get high right now? Either in your car or outside your car, then try to drive. Then you're gonna get sleepy, and then you're gonna screw shit up. So, but yeah, that's like the six or seven uh, tips I have. Like, why I think drivers, you know, end up screwing themselves with a can potentially make 2,000. There's certain things that they do that prevents them from reaching their uh, true potential. And um, shit, if you wanna make this 2,000, you gotta change something. You gotta sacrifice something, time, sleep, you know, weed, uh, fun. You know, it all depends how bad you want it, man. But that's all I really gotta say. These are tips. So um, I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving, you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of people took some time off, including myself, so get back out there, drive safe, get back on this grind, y'all make y'all $2,000 a week, that's what we're trying to get, two racks, so um, yeah, share this video, man, and if you disagree with what I'm saying, or if you could think of any other tips, or reasons why, like, people don't make 2000 a week, uh, drop it in the comments. Other than that, I'll holler back. Peace.